Senator Mitch McConnell can't believe more of our hard-earned money isn't being sent to Ukraine. Donald Trump is back in court, and you'll never believe what made the case judge laugh out loud unprofessionally. Democrat Jamal Bowman of New York, the guy who pulled the fire alarm to interrupt a congressional vote, is now saying he did it to save America because Republicans are Nazis. Thank you so much for liking and sharing these videos. It really helps me out. So thank you so much. We got a great show for you today. Now, biographer Michael Lewis, he wrote Moneyball and a few other big, uh, the big short, uh, has claimed that during his time of following around Sam Bankman Freed, the uh, fraudulent CEO of FTX, that Bankman Freed had planned to pay Donald Trump $5 billion from fraudulent FTX money in order to keep him out of the 2024 election. Lewis stated, when I was talking to Sam about this, it was $5 billion. Sam wasn't sure that number came directly from Trump. Now, do you think Bankman Freed was trying to compromise Donald Trump so that he wouldn't or couldn't run? I mean, he knew he was running a massive Ponzi scheme uh, that would eventually implode. We also know he gave $10 million to Joe Biden, and Joe Biden gave back $0 to the irate and scared investors that likely won't get very much money back. But it does beg the question, was he trying to buy Trump off, or was he trying to inject money in order to embarrass Trump and, and uh, implode his candidacy. RFK Jr. will be running as an independent, but many believe he will actually abandon the Democrat Party and run as a libertarian, which could split the ticket for Trump and Biden if they become the eventual frontrunners in 2024. The House and Senate have passed legislation to avoid a government shutdown for now, 45 days, using a continuing resolution. Under the new legislation, Congress will have until November 17th to negotiate the specifics of next year's budget, which means that they'll be negotiating this on November 16th. While the bill contains $16 billion for disaster relief aid, not one penny will go to Ukraine due to efforts led by the Republican Party. Despite the apparent loss for Democrats, Republican Senator, uh, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell stated, most Senate Republicans remain committed to helping our friends on the front lines. I'm confident the Senate will pass further urgent assistance to Ukraine later this year. He just loves giving our money to Ukraine, doesn't he? President Joe Biden called the agreement good news, but warned the Americans uh, sup warned that American support for Ukraine must not be stopped under any circumstance. I have an interview coming out this week, and you'll know why he's funneling so much money to Ukraine. Now, in reference to the promises made by Republicans, Biden stated, I fully expect the speaker will keep his commitment to the people of Ukraine and secure passage of the support needed to help Ukraine at this critical moment. What is this guy talking about? Kevin McCarthy never committed on behalf of the GOP to give more money to Ukraine, so why on earth would he say this? Now, speaking of disconnect between Republicans, uh, Representative Matt Gates has just confirmed that he will be seeking to remove House Speaker Kevin McCarthy during an interview on CNN. Gates stated, I do intend to file a motion to vacate Speaker McCarthy this week. I think we need to rip off the Band-Aid the one thing everybody has in common is no one trusts McCarthy. He lied to Biden and he lied to House conservatives. While Gates is mad at McCarthy for allegedly making deals behind his back, the New York Post has reported that Gates is now doing the same thing. According to the Post, Gates is making backroom deals with Democrats where he's promising them subpoena power regarding Biden's impeachment in exchange for helping oust Kevin McCarthy. If this is true, which Gates spokesman has denied, it would mean that Gates is putting Joe Biden's impeachment in inquiry in jeopardy. I'll continue to follow this story. Now, McCarthy responded to Gates' threat for removal, claiming it's nothing new 
and that he'll survive. McCarthy attacked Gates by being TV hungry, voting against securing the border and putting his personal feud above keeping the government open and running. During an interview with CBS, McCarthy challenged Gates, stating, bring it on, let's get it over with, and let's start governing. If he's upset because he's tried to push us in a shutdown, I made sure government didn't shut down. Then let's have the fight. So these two are probably going to have it out, and I'll continue to keep you updated on what happens. As if tension in Congress couldn't get any crazier, Democrat Representative Jamal Bowman from New York is being blasted by, Re by Republicans for allegedly trying to stop their funding bill from passing by pulling a fire alarm. Now, as a reporter, I have to say allegedly, but it's right on camera. He literally pulled it in order to stop Congress from voting on legislation. Now, according to Bowman's spokesman, he simply thought if he pulled the alarm, it would open a door. However, a photo from the event surface, which seems to show Bowman removing signs from the door, which warned that the exit was for emergencies only. So this guy's story is not lining up and it only gets worse. Now today, Bowman is now calling on fellow Democrat colleagues to have his back in this fight because he's working so hard at beating GOP Nazis. Really? Nazis? You're going to throw that out? I mean, whenever you don't have a great argument, you turn someone to Adolf Hitler, right? Now, does this guy really believe that Republicans are Nazis? Is this, is this the story going on in this New Yorker's head? Because there are absolutely no proof of that. I mean, it's just sad. It's just really sad to see. Now, speaking of New York, while Democrat Representative AOC defended Bowman, stating he made the decision in a moment of panic, Republicans have already moved to draft a resolution to expel Bowman from Congress. However, in my opinion, it's more likely that he will be censored or removed from a committee and that he will just have a stain on his record. Uh, the woman who is actually drafting up a motion to censure as we speak is Senator Lisa McLean, stated it's a felony, plain and simple. USCP had to waste resources investigating rather than actually keeping the Capitol safe. The House must hold Representative Bowman accountable. I don't know if they will or not, but some are even saying this is exactly what happened to the people on January 6th. They interrupted a congressional legislation session that is also illegal. California Governor Gavin Newsom is taking heat from Republicans and even more heat from his own Democrat party. First off, with the death of Senator Dianne Feinstein, Newsom vowed to put a black woman in her place for equity reasons. So not because of years of her experience or based on merit, but because of her gender and her skin color. Then on top of that, he didn't even select somebody from California. And I'm sure there are plenty of highly educated, incredible black women in California. But he brought a woman in from Maryland to fill the seat. So now the people of California are like, wait a minute. Why is a woman from Maryland representing us in the state of California? It doesn't make any sense. But what really baffled me was that Newsom knew what a woman was because I thought gender was an invented construct of white supremacy and that you couldn't define what a woman was. But I don't know. I've just been reading California news. Now, former President Donald Trump is in court today to defend the New York his New York businesses. New York is saying Trump defrauded the city of $1 billion dollars even though not a single victim has come forward that they've lost money or been financially damaged or hurt. In fact, the judge smiled and then laughed out loud at Letitia James staring down Donald Trump in court. It was super unprofessional, and many in the legal community say, this, this guy is out to get Trump. I mean, that's kind of what it looks like. Now, what's interesting is they say that New York was defrauded of a billion dollars but again, nobody's saying he's missed payments or that he's damaged them. So if he did inflate that, that means that he would have paid higher taxes, which means the state of New York, the city of New York, 
would actually have received more money than they were entitled to. So it's just the opposite. New York has actually been enriched by Donald Trump's business dealings. Speaking of former presidents, Bill Clinton has chimed in on the current migrant crisis in New York and labeled it a sanctuary city with an issue. Clinton argued New York's right to shelter law needs to be changed now, stating it's broken. We need to fix it. It doesn't make any sense. They come here and we're supposed to shelter people who can't get work permits for six months. We need to change this. So he's finally getting upset with the sanctuary city being overrun with illegal immigrants that are sucking up the hard paid resources of the people of New York. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has just held an international defense industry conference with the aim of boosting their domestic production of weapons. Zelensky has seemingly realized that Ukraine must become more self-reliant. NATO nations do not have bottomless pockets. He stated, heroism alone, heroism alone cannot intercept missiles. Ukraine needs capabilities, high quality, high quantity, and quickly. There is no defense without industry. Now, this is my update for today. As I know more, I will definitely come on and share more with you. So much going on. I didn't even get to one one hundredth of the crazy stories that were in the news today. Now, before you go, I want to remind you that you are amazing. Please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and check out this video, and also check out this video. I appreciate you stopping by, and I will see you on the next video.